Welcome to the exciting world of creative and unique logo design. A logo is the calling card of any brand, its face and voice. A logo can imprint itself in memory within mere seconds, making the brand recognizable, like a visual identity that conceals a multitude of ideas and messages. And for me, the most crucial tool in logo design is the use of the golden ratio. I always strive to adhere to this principle, this philosophy. I aim to embed images and meanings into my logos that aren't superficial but sadly I look to them. And for maintaining the right forms and proportions, I utilize a modular grid and the golden ratio. Today, I'll tell you about one of such logos where I applied the golden ratio. Some time ago, I created a logo for a company called Joydis, specializing in manufacturing technical equipment of rehabilitation for children. It's a new brand, and the main goal is to produce high-quality products that match competitors but are sold at an affordable price. I gladly took on this project. The core idea of the logo is to depict care, reliability, movement and joy. Based on these associations, I started creating a mood board. Before diving into further work on the logo, let me explain in more detail what the golden ratio is. The golden ratio is a mathematical relationship often found in the world around us, such as in architecture, painting and modern design. Using the golden ratio allows you to create an image that is naturally aesthetically pleasing and attractive to the eye. The golden ratio is derived from the Fibonacci sequence, a sequence of numbers named after the Italian mathematician Fibonacci. The essence of the Fibonacci sequence lies in placing the numbers 0 and 1 in a row, and then adding them. This results in the digit 1. We then place this number further in the sequence alongside our initial numbers 0 and 1. Next, we sum up the neighboring numbers 1 plus 1. As a result, we get the digit 2. We place the digit 2 in the sequence with the other numbers. Now, sum up 1 and 2, resulting in the digit 3. We also place in the digit 3 in the sequence with the other numbers. Then we sum up 2 and 3, resulting in the digit 5 and we place it in the sequence with the other numbers as well. If we continue to sum up the two neighboring numbers, we'll end up with an infinite sequence like this. This sequence of numbers is called the Fibonacci numbers. In these numbers, there's an interesting property. If you divide any number starting from 5 by the previous number, you'll get approximately 1 and 6 tenths. After the 13th number, this division will consistently yield around 1 for 618 thousandths. This number is called the golden number. It forms the proportion known as the golden ratio. For visualization, Fibonacci numbers can be represented as squares with sides of 1 and 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. Placing these squares so that each successive one touches the previous ones results in the golden ratio diagram. And if I draw a spiral to represent the interaction between these squares, it becomes the golden spiral. The golden spiral is considered a natural phenomenon and is often found in the world around us and in nature, like seashells. 
snail shells, various plants, and natural phenomena. The golden ratio is applied in design to achieve aesthetics. This ratio creates a sense of natural beauty, harmony, and proportion. Golden ratio commonly used in typesetting text arrays. For example, if the main text is 15 pixels in size, multiplying it by 1 and 6 tenths yields 24 pixels. This implies that the natural balance between the main text and the headline would be achieved if the headline is at 24 pixels tall. Logos of popular brands like Twitter, Pepsi and Apple are greatly influenced by golden ratio. Apple's affinity for the golden ratio is well known among their fans and in the design world. Even the iCloud logo incorporates the golden ratio. I frequently use the golden ratio in logo development. It can involve using circles with diameters in a specific sequence or constructing the logo within the overall proportion of the golden ratio. Now that you understand the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers, I can continue and start sketching the Joydis logo. During the mood board creation, I realized that the key associations for the logo would revolve around the brand's initials J and D. Also, the heart and arrow imagery symbolizing care, joy, reliability and movement. The logo should be simple, with a clear and memorable image. Great sketches. Time for a coffee break. While working on this logo, I will use a modular grid and the proportion of the golden ratio. This will help me create an aesthetically pleasing logo. I calculated all the circle diameters using the golden number. The logo resembles the shape of a heart and an arrow. I use shades of blue as the primary colors. It's an excellent logo. I am pleased with the outcome, and the golden ratio helped maintain pleasing proportions that are easy on the eyes. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can totally order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. You'll find the contact form in the description box. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance through the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.
Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex, I am full-time logo designer and icon maker. I often come up with logos by combining different associations. This way I build my portfolio of logos that I later sell on the LogoGround website. I usually create logos using Adobe Illustrator. I've been using it for over 10 years. But recently I asked myself a question. Can I make a logo on my iPhone? Is it really? I think let's find out together. Recently, I had an idea for a logo for an educational institution. I thought about combining two associations. The first association is the human brain, symbolizing knowledge and thinking. The second association is a tree, symbolizing wisdom and longevity. I usually start working on a logo with a mood board. It's time to sketch out the future logo. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want more weekly updates on design. To create a logo on the iPhone, you need to buy and unpack it. This is my new iPhone 15 blue color.
for drawing the logo, I use the Curve app. It's a simple and user-friendly vector editor. Even if you don't have experience, you will quickly be able to understand this app. First, you need to set up a template for more convenient work. Now I'll create a modular grid. This will help maintain the right proportions. The main work on the logo is done. I can save this logo in SVG format for fuller editing and working with it. I decided to enhance the logo a bit and add a dimension using gradient and shadows. In the end, I ended up with this unique logo. As you can see, making a logo on the iPhone is more than possible. If you don't have access to a laptop or Adobe Illustrator, you can use your smartphone for quick sketching of your ideas. I think this is an excellent result. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance through the link in the description box. It's a unique logo, and only one person can buy it for their brand or business, but only once. You can purchase it exclusively on my Gumroad page. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. You'll find the order form link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon! In today's world, we are surrounded by countless logos that fill our everyday lives. When we wake up and reach for our phones, the first thing we see is a logo. They are everywhere, on product packaging on the clothes we wear, in the kitchen while preparing breakfast, basically everywhere our eyes wander. But logos are more than just pictures or symbols, they can make our lives more interesting and appealing. Throughout the day we are surrounded by dozens, hundreds or even thousands of logos, each with its own story, meaning and purpose. Some logos hold mysteries, others are simple and concise, some are playful, and others are strongly associated with their respective products. Logos are not only visual elements, but also symbols that help us recognize and connect products or services with specific brands. They are key elements of brand or product identification. When we see the logo of a familiar brand, we are associated with quality, reliability and certain values. Many brands strive to create a unique logo that reflects their individuality and recognition. These logos help us make decisions and choices based on familiar and trustworthy brands. I love going for walks, and every time I pay attention to the various logos that surround me. I 
I study their structure, memorize their lines, and look for hidden meanings. Bright colors, unique shapes, and stylish fonts capture my attention and evoke positive emotions. I encounter logos on building facades, billboards, in stores, and on product packaging. They make the environment more vibrant and diverse, adding visual interest to everyday life. While examining logos, I conduct a mental analysis, train my observation skills, and play my favorite game, which involves combining different symbols or meanings into a single unique logo. During my walks, I often play this game in my thoughts. This is how I come up with ideas for logos that I later sell on the LogoGround website. For example, if you combine a fingerprint and a heart, you can get a logo like this one. And if you merge a heart with dental clinic, you can get a logo like this. Recently, I decided to create a logo for an AI-related application or company. I thought, what if I combine the silhouette of a human head, symbolizing humanity and intelligence, with a fingerprint, which represents not only integrity and security, but also self-identification that developers aim to imbue artificial intelligence with. The fingerprint pattern gives us uniqueness. It makes us distinctive. These are the meanings I wanted to incorporate into the new logo. So I quickly grabbed my sketchbook and started sketching. As I put my thoughts on paper, I realized that the logo had to be placed within a certain shape. I really like the shape of a super ellipse. It's something in between a circle and a square. Once the sketching work was done, it was time to start drawing the logo in Adobe Illustrator. To maintain the shapes and proportions, I usually use a modular grid. It always helps me in creating logos and icons. The lines inside the head not only resemble a fingerprint, but also remind me of the robot head from the movie iRobot. To create the required super ellipse shape, I usually use the Squirkly website. It's a very convenient and useful tool for creating the perfect super ellipse, which can be saved in SVG format. After several hours of meticulous work, I ended up with this logo, which I uploaded for sale on the LogoGround website.
It's a unique logo, and anyone can purchase it for their brand or product only once. You can get a more detailed overview of this case on the Behance website through the link in the description box. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I'm always open to new projects and others. You'll find the contact form for place and another through the link in the description box. Logos transform our lives, making them better and more interesting. They help us recognize and connect products and services with specific brands, add visual interest to our surroundings, and contribute to social identification. Thanks to innovation and new technologies, logos have become an integral part of our daily experience. So the next time you see a familiar logo, pay attention to its magical power that makes our lives brighter and more captivating. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Hey, my name is Alex, I am logger and icon maker. Some time ago, I received a request to design logo and icon for the desktop application ChatGPT. The application was being developed for major operating systems like macOS, Windows and Linux, which means the future icon should adapt well to different design guidelines. According to the client's idea, the icon and logo should resemble an old book with a schematic depiction of a robot on it. The book itself should be bound with a green ribbon, which by the way can be changed to red to represent, for example, a test version of the application. Interestingly, this image was created by a neural network. This allowed the client to convey the idea of what they want to see in the final result. After discussing all the details of the project, I started working on it. Before starting a new project, I usually explore other ideas on websites like Behance and Dribble. After that, I conduct research and create a mood board. I add logos, icons, illustrations and other materials that inspire me to create the future logo. It's a quite engaging process and I always spend a significant amount of time on it. This way I train my eye for design. While creating the mood board, I get the various images in my mind that will help me shape the logo in the future. The next step is sketching out the future icon. I create all the sketches based on my imagination, perception and the mood board I prepared earlier. This interaction with images ultimately leads to the final result that aligns with my vision of the future logo. The book symbolized an encyclopedia, a treasure trove of knowledge that holds answers to all questions. and the robot of the cover symbolize the technical aspect of AI. 
The shape of its head resembles a speech bubble, which refers to communicating with artificial intelligence through a chatbot. In the end, I came up with several versions of the icon. Now I will show them to the client. While the sketches are on review, it's time to take a short break and go for a walk. After receiving a positive response from the client, I start drawing the icon in Adobe Illustrator, following the Apple guidelines for macOS. When working on the macOS icon, it's essential to consider not only light texture and materials, but also a slight three-dimensional perspective. As if we are looking at the icon slightly from above at a small angle. For the book cover I will use a leather texture to create an aging effect. And for the book spine I will use a fabric texture to emphasize the binding and a more vintage charm. On the book cover I will place a schematic representation of the robot. The final touch is adding the ribbon and shadows. Once the macOS icon is completed, it needs to be simplified and prepared for Windows and then for Linux. All operating systems have their design guidelines for displaying application icons. I believe it's crucial to consider them for the best visual representation and optimal user interaction with the final product. In the Windows Developer section, you can find the necessary design guidelines to adapt the icon. By slightly modifying the shape and simplifying the perception, I create the icon for the ChatGPT application. The same process needs to be done for the icon on the Linux operating system. GNOME is one of the most popular desktop environments for Linux. Following its design guidelines partially, I adapt the icon for the ChatGPT application. As a result, I have three icons. One for macOS, one for Windows and one for Linux. They look great. After some more work, I prepared a set of smaller icons that can be used as a icon on website or for display in the taskbar. I also created a few avatars featuring the robot image. I sent this collection of various logo versions, icons and avatars to the client after receiving the final payment for my work. In the end, the client was satisfied with the final result of my work. They loved all versions of the icons. And I hope you enjoyed this video too. Please like and subscribe to the channel. For a more detailed overview of this case, you can visit the Behance website through the link in the description box. Thank you for watching and see you soon.
Lately, I've been seeing more and more news about artificial intelligence. Some companies are creating and improving this tool, while others waste no time in implementing AI into their products. For some people, AI is something incomprehensible, unnecessary, and dangerous. But for others, AI has become an integral part of their lives, improving and simplifying the automation of various processes. Recently, I have already created a few logos for AI-related products. One of them is the icon for the desktop application ChatGPT. And another logo I created myself for sale on the LogoGround website. I decided to take it a step further and create a couple more logos for sale on the topic of artificial intelligence. To do this, I combine two simple and understandable associations – the brain and the algorithmic structure of AI. I imagine that AI's processing of queries is a kind of intertwining every answer possibilities. They intertwine and intersect like thin threads. This concept of intertwine lines inspired me to create new logos. It's time to pick up a pencil and make some sketches. First, I want to try making a logo in the shape of a brain consisting of two hemispheres. Inside it, there should be many lines that can intersect each other, forming a pattern. I like this concept. For the other logo, I decided to make a brain in the side view. I think this brain shape resembles a speech bubble. This association fits well for a logo related to AI, as all communication happens through a chatbot. The thin lines should smoothly intertwine with each other, forming the shape of a brain. I am quite satisfied with the result of the sketch. Now I can take a short break and play some PlayStation. It's time to start drawing the logos in Adobe Illustrator. To do this, I will transfer my sketches to the workspace. For more convenient work and proper proportion ratio, I am using a modular grid. When working on the first logo, I need to create maximum smoothness of lines and clear shapes. The image of the two brain hemispheres should be easily recognizable at first glance.
The same applies to the second logo variation. I am striving to accurately position each line. Now I am adding shadows to the lines to give depth and make the logos more interesting and mysterious. I chose a green color as the background. It complements the theme perfectly and is familiar to many, as the ChatGPT logo uses a similar shade the green. I uploaded the final logo designs for sale on the LogoGround website. These are unique logos, and anyone can purchase them for their brand or product, but only once. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can order them from me. I am always open to new projects and orders. You will find the order form linked in the description box. You can get a more detailed overview of this case on the Behance. You'll find the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon. This is my workspace. I spend several hours here every day. It's where my logos and icon sets come to life. So, when I have some free time from logo design orders, which doesn't happen very often, I don't just sit back and relax. No, I keep on working and creating new logos to sell on Logo Ground. This approach helps me refine ideas that didn't quite fit my clients' needs, but I still see potential in them. All it takes is a little effort to turn these ideas into something great. Let me share one of those ideas with you today. Once. I got a request to design a logo for an auto repair shop. The client wanted an abstract logo. And here it is. By the way, if you need a logo or a set of icons, you can totally order them from me. I'm always open to new projects. You'll find the contact form in the description box. While working on this logo, another idea struck me. I decided to combine two concepts, car and range. I also thought that car repair can be pretty complex, and many people don't really understand how it works. So, the logo should be friendly, clear and a bit playful to better visualize what I wanted and to train my eye. I created a mood board based on simple ideas like a cute car and a range.
going to grab my sketchbook and start drawing some rough drafts. I want to bend the silhouette of the range to resemble a car with wheels as its wheels. I think this idea works, and I can continue developing it. When I work in Adobe Illustrator, I always use a modular grid to ensure the logo has consistency and proportion. The base shape for everything, especially the range, is a super ellipse. A shape that's like a mix between a circle and a square. I love using this shape as it gives a modern, rounded and friendly look. As for the main color, I'll use a vibrant gradient fill. For the font of this logo, I decided to pick one from Google Fonts. I need something more naive, maybe even slightly childish, to reflect the friendly and playful concept. Alright, the logo is now complete. I uploaded the final result on Logo Ground for sale. It's a unique logo, and only one person can buy it for their brand or business. For a more detailed look at this case, you can check it out on Behance to the link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.